Welcome back, alphas and guests. Today, we've got a product review of a new beta project. I've been using it in Star Citizen 3.5 to help me control my ship in this new flight model. That way I can focus more on what matters in the moment. It's called Game Glass. Now, why has there been so much buzz around this project lately? Time for a briefing, so hold orbit. Star Citizen 3.5 changed our flight control keybinds. Again. Between every single patch, the buttons yeah. just changed massively, and it was, it was enough to drive us crazy. Yes. Them. yes. And I'm curious if you've shared any of the same experiences that I have with these nomadic keybinds. Like, let's say muscle memory takes over, and instinctively hitting an old targeting key from 3.4 results in accidentally turning off one of your ship's key systems. What about exiting your pilot seat at just the wrong time? Sound familiar? And I'm sure you could think of tons of other control mishaps that happened when you were flying, right? Well, I've found a way to solve keybind pain points while marinating you in smooth immersion. That's right, smooth with a V. Game Glass is an easier, more simplified way to control a ship without so much risk of hitting the wrong key or key combination, no matter what odd key binding that CIG assigns. The button baron coming in and changing things. It turns your tablets or big phones into game controllers, specifically for those interactive displays in your Star Citizen ship, the MFDs or multi-function displays. Now let's start with some strengths of Game Glass Beta. Game Glass buttons are labeled and color coded. It's very easy to switch screens or shards as they call them. Game Glass binds your unbound keys for you and then you just quickly add the keybind file to the game. Setup is simple, and I'd expect it only involves 10 to 30 minutes of your time, depending on your tech skill. It's certainly faster than manually binding your keys and then re-memorizing them. We all know that Star Citizen is constantly evolving, right? It's changing, it's adding controls as needed during their expanding game development. Yet, when Star Citizen changes their keyboard controls, the labeled buttons on my game glass shards are still in the same place that I always tap on my tablet. So that way I can focus more on gameplay rather than looking down at my keyboard or getting stressed out. It's an easier way to control my MFDs with just the tap of a finger. That's so much easier than just using the in-game controls through interaction mode. I'm still controlling my ship in-game with the MFDs, yet Game Glass gives you a nice size touchscreen button that you can physically interact with, not only simplifying the user experience, yet it also increases your skill level. I'm actually hitting the right keys as quickly and accurately as I can, and that allows me to focus more on my next move instead of wasting time. You know, even a slight hesitation in combat can cost you. At the time of recording during Star Citizen Alpha 3.5, there is no API support within Star Citizen. So this was a big challenge to overcome for the Game Glass team. After a painstaking development process, Game Glass designers were even able to make working power and shield management systems. What? So you just drag the dot on your touchscreen and it moves your power or shield distribution in game. <laughs> yeah. Now, here's what's really clever. If you change the power or shield distribution in game, but not with Game Glass, right? Maybe you forget because, you know, you're used to doing it in game. Then when you redistribute power shields on your touchscreen, Game Glass will actually reset the position to default or balanced before sending the command to your game client. That way you never have to worry about the two getting out of sync and then giving you problems. Hey, um, that info was for all of you guys on the Discord servers wondering how they pulled that off. Now, Game Glass has foresight. Once crew stations can be assigned in game, co-pilots will be actively working these systems while in flight, especially in combat. If someone else changes, say, the power distribution to be heavy on the weapons, and then you, the pilot, need to slide it over more toward the engines to pull off some maneuver, when you drag the dot to your desired location, Game Glass gives you what you want without you having to manually reset it first because somebody else was working power as well. And the signal's fast, typically 2 to 3 milliseconds, and way faster than using interaction mode any day. It appears that they are not only considering how to future-proof Game Glass as best they can for the ever-changing Star Citizen project, yet they are also building this platform out to support other games. <laughs> like Elite Dangerous, No Man's Sky, Subnautica, Sea of Thieves, among others. Oh, 
World of Warcraft, whose battlegrounds and arenas captured my attention from vanilla to cataclysm. I wonder how much easier that grind to 1800 would have been back in the day if we had had Game Glass. Hmm. The early Game Glass backers had some voice in which games will be supported in the future, so you can check out the list on the Game Glass site. And in case you're concerned about security, Game Glass doesn't send any of your game login info to them or anyone else. The way it works is actually simple. You open the app or you go to the website on your touchscreen. That loads the most current version of their button layout. Okay? And when you hit a button on your tablet, it actually is sending the command over your local Wi Fi network, not out into the world. So you don't have to worry about real life pirates working on their crime stats. Here's the weaknesses of this initial beta version that I tested. Just like Star Citizen, Game Glass is still being developed, so you may have to grind up your skill and patience and wait for some features or game support. So at the time of this video, Game Glass Beta 1.0 is designed for regular size tablets. So think 7 to 10 inch screens. Therefore, on your smartphone, some buttons will be small, especially depending on your device's screen size. In the first alpha iteration of Game Glass, icons would overlap each other when shrunk down to smaller phones. Well, you may have heard that. However, now the Game Glass team has created a threshold marker with their shards, where if your screen is under tablet size, the icons are arranged in a tighter layout that gives you a little more room to work with. Though, I gotta call out two things. If fat fingering is a risk you foresee, add Game Glass to the biggest screens you have available. The Game Glass shards are designed on 8 inch fire tablets, from what I hear. That gives you a good sized screen to be able to tap with a quick glance, going to save you time. Number two, Game Glass is actively developing a mobile version of the shards that they call Fragments. And that's going to be their answer to backer requests for a version specifically designed for smartphones. It's a high priority, so stay tuned for that if you aren't in a place to buy a cheap tablet yet. Initially, there was some confusion over which shards or shards would be free and which ones would be paid access, could buy with a lifetime, whatever. There was a little confusion. However, before I finished recording this video, they had already addressed it. It's up on their website, guys, so you can check it out for details on what parts are free and what extra access you can get if you throw them some money to help development. As of the recording of this video, Game Glass just recently launched their beta version, which doesn't run that well on Safari. So to help all you Apple users out there, Game Glass has created an app that you can download from the App Store that will give you the optimized experience that fruit lovers expect on their high-end devices. Who bit that apple anyway? Huh. So if you have an iPad, or maybe a very large iPhone, and you want to try it out, just get the app, and you're good to go. Remember, the more real estate on your screen, the better. Also, older Microsoft devices that are locked to so only using Internet Explorer without access to Edge are unsupported. Could be a good time to upgrade. Hey, if you drop about 80 bucks USD on a Fire HD 8 tablet, you'll have optimal size screen for your game glass without sacrificing a whole lot of desk space. I saved you time and put a link in the description to one with Prime shipping. It's about 80 bucks, 61 quid. They're available in four colors to help you match your org colors or your SIM pod. Now that we've covered a few strengths and weaknesses of the initial beta version, allow me to tell you a little bit more about my experience using the service. Personally, knowing that I wanted to feel like I was immersed in my own first person sci-fi movie, I arranged my smartphone as a test to the right of my mouse. And I only use it for the flight shard as it has this big, gratifying, animated quantum travel button on it and some other larger, distinct icons. Plus, I was pretty familiar with it because I had used Game Glass Alpha 1.1. For the other shards, like the brand new combat shard with working power and shield distribution, I positioned my old Nexus 7 Wi-Fi tablet to the left of my keyboard as my main MFD. And this gave me plenty of real estate to tap, toggle, or drag my ship's controls around on the touchscreen. It felt very next-gen, just without LaForge and the whole L-Cars look. I figured the risk of hitting the wrong key on my smartphone was minimal. With the new optimization made for mobile, running that particular shard on my 6.2-inch Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus screen, I was happy. I was excited, like kind of like the first time I logged into the Persistent Universe to experience something groundbreaking. And to sum it all up, here's my too long, didn't read. Game Glass offers a clever way to get more immersed in your game and control it more easily and efficiently. 
That way you can control a ship in a very complex game. It even enables first-time PC gamers to have some more confidence. Some of the features, though, are still in development, and we'll just have to wait. I've posted a link to Game Glass Beta in the description below. And I'll even give you a link to their Discord server, just in case you have questions for their devs and you'd like to speak to them directly. If this review helped shed some light on Game Glass, or if you just want to hook a citizen up, please return the favor and upvote the video. Be sure you've subscribed, keep comms open, and I'll be looking for you in the verse.